Dr. Yasir Mohamed is a graduate from IHE. He obtained his master's in hydraulic engineering in 1990. And later he obtained his PhD in a joint degree between IHE Delft and TU Delft in 2005. And in 2006, he joined IHE as a lecturer, where he later became associate professor in water resources management. We are very happy that in uh, earlier this month, in early September, he was appointed the new Minister of Irrigation and Water Resources of the Transition Government of Sudan, which is obviously a very challenging position after 30 years of autocratic rule. Dr. Mohamed, what do you see as the main challenges that the new Sudan is facing? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Peter. Uh, first, please allow me to to send my uh, to blessing for those who sacrifice their lives for the change in Sudan, and also my praise for those who were injured to make this change happen. And I'm really happy to be back in Laos. Laos is like my second hometown, and also in Aichi. Aichi, I see it as also like my my working place. Uh, Sudan is a dry country, as you know. Uh, we have uh, rainfall for a short period of time, two, three months in the south part, but in the central part of Sudan, in the northern part of Sudan, it's a very dry country. We have the Nile in the central part of Sudan. So the challenge is regarding the water sector is to, to provide water for drinking or for irrigation uh, in a good way in, in, the, in the future. Uh, the other challenges, of course, we came after 30 years of, uh, of a country almost collapsed, uh, 30 years of isolation and 30 years of oppressions. So we are slowly, slowly moving into a new uh, era of freedom and peace and justice. Do you see a role of the Netherlands in supporting the challenges that you have just outlined uh, in the new Sudan? Yeah, yes, of course. The Netherlands is a, a good friend to Sudan since many, many, many years. And I learned that Netherlands is one of the first embassies to open in Khartoum like 60 years ago, 60 years ago. And the Netherlands is famous with water management and they used to help Sudan also addressing its uh, challenges in the water sector. Uh, I know that uh, during when I started my job in Sudan in the mid 80s, there were a number of projects, technical support uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, started from like dredging the sediments from irrigation canals in Jazeera, or dredging the sediment from Roseris Reservoir, or uh, making water management in Gash, in Kasala town in east part of Sudan, where you have uh, surface water interact with groundwater. And also in western part of Sudan, in Darfur, there was a big project on groundwater and wadis to provide technical support to, to Sudan. In addition to the capacity building programs, you will see many Sudanese water professionals got training here in, in the Netherlands, in different institutions, especially in Aichi. One of the first students came to Aichi was in late 1950s, I think, or early 60s. So we, le we really look forward for the technical support from the Netherlands in the water sector, at least to resume the relation which is stopped like 30 years ago. Many people are interested in transboundary issues when it comes to water, and in particular in the Nile and on the Blue Nile. Um, what do you see as the, the role of the new Sudan in collaboration on the Blue Nile between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt? Yes, thank you for your question. In fact, uh, it's a good question because uh, just three days ago or four days ago, we completed uh, a big meeting in Khartoum around the Grand Ethiopian uh, Renaissance Dam. Uh, the political 
or the geopolitical location of Sudan makes Sudan in a, in, a, in a very good position to to support cooperation in the region between the upstream countries and the downstream countries. And the new regime in Sudan um, aiming for, as, as the slogan of the revolution is that freedom, justice and peace is, is, can be also reflected in the role of the country, not only within Sudan, but also uh, in the region, is that the Nile can be considered as, or the Blue Nile in particular, can be considered as an avenue for cooperation among the Nile countries for uh, sharing the benefits and uh, causing no significant harm. And that would be, I see, the role of Sudan in that, in that line.